Hi everyone, welcome to ThinkX Academy. In this video, I'm going to show the roadmap of Java programming language. So if you're planning to become a Java developer or even if you are an, a beginner or an intermediate, I think this video will help you uh, guide in your whole Java career. So uh, make sure to watch this video till the end because I'm going to share a lot of things that I've learned and a lot of things that I have opted to learn all of these concepts. Plus, I'm also going to share some of the free resources that I have created on this channel with you guys so that you also have the resources and the roadmap combined. You will be able to learn Java more intuitively. So let's start with the first thing first, which is the phase one. So basically, this roadmap is in three colors. The first one is the black one. The second one is the blue one and the third one is the red one. So the black one is the phase one, which is the beginner phase. The blue one is the phase two, which is the intermediate phase. And the red one is the advanced phase, right? So these are the three phases here. So basically this one is the third phase. So I'm going to start with the first phase. Let's start with it now. So first of all, if you're a complete new to Java programming, you want to start your career right away. So the first thing you will have to do is understand JVM, bytecode and some of the important features of Java programming like what is object oriented programming and how uh, you can actually uh, compile and run a Java program. Those comes in this first part. Then we, you will have to learn data types, methods and constructors and then comes control statements which are basically uh, for loops. Then we have while do while loops all of that in this section so basically in the first phase we are actually trying to get the basics right and remember if you will skip this first uh, phase which is the beginner phase you will face a lot of problems in the intermediate and advanced phase so uh, even when i started java programming when i started learning java programming i focused on these important concepts a lot i have not only just read them, I have implemented them. So you will have to make sure that you implement them and you understand what is the basic idea behind that concept or else you are going to face challenges in these phases and specifically in the advanced phase. Now let's move on to uh, the next topic, which is classes and objects. Now this is very important topic and uh, classes and objects is very important because Java is fully object oriented. So it supports classes and objects. So you will be playing around with classes and objects for the whole of your Java career, right? So you will have to understand how to create classes and then you will have to come to inheritance, which basically means how to inherit, uh, create an inherited class. And then you will study packages, interfaces, and abstract classes. So one thing is when you are studying these concepts, you will have to also focus on whether, uh, how they are applicable, what is their use, right? So let's say we are talking about inheritance. So you will have to understand what is the need of inheritance. Why do we require inheritance and in which cases can we even avoid inheritance, right? So similarly with these concepts also, after this comes a very important phase, which is exceptional handling. Exception handling is something that is very crucial for every Java developer. If you're developing Java uh, applications, you must know what are the exceptions that can come out of a program. So exceptions are not basically errors. They are actually some conditions that you that are some unexpected conditions. So you will have to make sure how to handle those unexpected conditions. And that comes here, which is in the exception handling. Next comes generics. So you should know how to implement generic classes because this is important for the collections framework. Basically collections framework is actually a Java framework which helps uh, implement some of the data structures like um, linked list, tags, queues easily by using this. And for that you must have the knowledge of generics. So you will have to follow this roadmap uh, in the right order and you can see that I have already created a Java playlist. I will give the link to that playlist in the description of this video and also in the I button here. So you can check that out. So in that playlist, I have 
uh, given all the videos in the right sequential order you will have to follow them in the uh, in the same order at it, as it is given so i have covered till here in the java playlist and now i'm planning to move to the advanced phase in the java playlist so i will create another course which is the advanced java course which will come on this channel very soon so where we will discuss some of the important spring framework and all of that stuff also so make sure to subscribe our channel and hit the notification bell so that whenever I will launch this course, you will be able to get notified and you can also check out some of our courses on this channel. So make sure to like this video and also subscribe our channel to support this channel because I keep creating these awesome tutorial videos for you guys, right? So um, let's move on to the this phase, which is file handling. File handling is also very important. You must know how to create files, uh, how to create readable, non-readable files, how to open files and uh, perform some operations in it, right? Then we have multi-threaded programming. Again, a very important thing because nowadays uh, there are a lot of CPUs which support multi-threaded programming. So it is very important for Java developers to understand how to create a thread how to avoid some conditions like deadlocks or something like that. So you must study uh, multi-threaded programming and remember to uh, check out all of these videos are in the playlist, Java playlist. So you can rely on those videos. What you will have to do is I, uh, if you're choosing any uh, particular video, let's say you pick up the video classes and objects. So what you will have to do is you will have to first go through the video then implement it by yourself in your IDE and in your Java environment, you can choose Eclipse or IntelliJ. And then you will have to note down some of the important points if you can in the notes, right? So now you will have to learn Lambda expressions. If you consider Lambda expressions, they are quite useful and they are uh, used in a lot of um, various uh, enterprise applications also. So you must know what are these. Then comes this part, which is the debugging phase. So every application, every developer must know how to debug the application so that you can find out the bugs in it, right? So you will have to create the breakpoints where the flow of the program will break and you will be able to find out that at this position, the bug is, right? So that's the debugging and breakpoints phase. Again, I've created a very good video on this topic also. And I've created on all of these topics. So definitely you can check that out. Let's move on to the phase two, which is intermediate phase. This phase is very important because it links these two phases. After you have completed the basics, after you have done the basics, this is going to be your step to move to advanced Java, right? So here what I've done is I've created five videos in the intermediate section. These five videos are related to JDBC and MySQL which comes in the intermediate phase. So in that I'm creating a CRUD application. Basically a CRUD application is an application where we try to perform four operations, which is create, retrieve, update and delete, right? So it is a very useful app to understand how you can uh, create a user interface and how you can connect with the backend database and perform these operations in that database. So you must uh, use that. So in that we are going to use JDBC and MySQL. So uh, there, are, there are five videos on each of these operations. So you can definitely check them out also. Next one is how to set up the Tomcat server for deploying the enterprise applications, for deploying the servlets and Java beans. And uh, we need Tomcat server, right? So you must know how to set up an Apache Tomcat server. I've also created a video on that. Then we have JSP pages. So Java server pages is basically HTML pages and they also have some Java code in it. So you will also learn that. Then we have servlets and Java beans. So at this point, when you have covered these intermediate topics, phase two is over. But remember, if you want a, a job of a Java developer, if you have done till phase two, it is not even enough, right? because in most of the companies, when you apply, you will see that they cover these two phases in just one single line, uh, which is Java basics and OOPS concept, right? So they cover all of these and these are just basic. So they do not hire developers on the basis of knowledge of only these two phases, right? 
So let's move on to the last phase, which is the phase three. This phase is a very important phase and uh, most of the developers will uh, get uh, a lot of struggle in this phase because this is advanced Java and there are a lot of things that you will actually face a lot of challenges in here. So uh, I will I have not uh, covered this phase yet in the playlist, but I will create a course on that soon on this channel. So we will start with a CRUD application in that course or a dynamic website where I will use the Spring Framework. Spring Framework is a very important framework and it is used in the enterprise environment. Spring Pro, uh, you, if you want, you can check out uh, spring.io which is the official website of Spring Framework and there you will be able to know that these are uh, the what is the use of Spring Framework most of the big companies like Amazon they they use Spring Framework in the in their Java uh, enterprise projects right then you will have to understand Spring MVC so basically MVC is a design pattern which is model view controller so you will have to understand that whatever code you are writing it is following this design pattern because it is the design pattern which is being followed inside of the industry right now. So Spring MVC actually provides a way to implement this design pattern which is basically a form of writing code uh, by separating the model and view and controller. So uh, this is also important and you will have to learn how to create applications that are designed for MVC design pattern. Next comes Hibernate, again a very important framework. Now, uh, if you have studied objects, right, classes and objects, your knowledge will apply here because what Hibernate does is, Hibernate converts these Java objects and it maps it to the relational databases. So basically relational databases are like columns and rows, those are the tables and what you can do is, you can create Java objects and hibernate uh, using hibernate you can convert them and map them in your database in the form of rows and columns so it is an, indeed a very important library and is still in uses where uh, actually a lot of companies relies on uh, relational databases like mysql database right next comes the apache struts framework now if you already know spring mvc uh, you can or cannot learn uh, struts framework but it is required and it is a requirement in a lot of job applications I have seen. It is uh, given by the uh, company that they want that the developer must have the knowledge of Apache Struts. So what is the use of Apache Struts? It is basically a framework to implement the MVC which is the model view controller inside of Java enterprise applications. Next comes practice and projects, right? So after learning all these skills, uh, it will take a lot of time to master till here, till phase two. Uh, if you dedicate every day like two to three hours, you will be able to master these in uh, six months or seven months or so. But for that, you will have to focus a lot and then only you will be able to do these two steps. And for the last step, you will it will also take four months at least to master these concepts because they are not easy. And then you will have to make sure to practice and to do more projects like you can create more dynamic websites that are using these uh, concepts. And when you are uh, confident in using these frameworks, these Hibernate, Spring Framework, and you have concept of all these basic concepts, if you have good hold of that, you are actually job ready. You can apply to a various applications that are related to Java programming. So. Uh, that's all for this video. I hope you will like uh, this video and you will also like all the videos that I have created in the Java course. So we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.